That was sickening last week, by the way. What? Uh, that's what is going on junk. with you here? No, it's not. What is this stuff on here? We're hockey night in Canada. We're here with uh, Jordi from Propagandi after uh, a crazy set at the Metropolis. So I have a few questions for you. And the first one that I think is on most people's minds that we're at the show tonight is, what was up with the clown painter? Uh, we've met him in the past, Pascal. He proposed the idea and we thought, yeah, it'll add some, uh, some color to an ad otherwise potentially dreadful, awkward social moment, sort of self-defeating banter, you know. Yeah, add a good uh, different element to it and it's Montreal, so what the hell. So is this the first time you've incorporated some sort of art into a, into a show? I think so, yeah. Yeah, first time. Fantastic. Montreal first. All right. One question we like to ask the most here is, I know you've been in propaganda, you've been doing this for quite a while, since 86, if I'm correct. Uh, what was your first band, though? Oh, my first band. Uh, yes, we were called Spectrum for a wide variety of music. We were, uh, that's how I kind of learned how to play. Uh, we did... Uh, we played at Legion Halls and Army and Navies when we were about uh, when we we're fourteen or fifteen. I think we started it. <laughs> Four fucking sets, forty-five minutes each, with uh, three fifteen-minute breaks. Yeah, it was uh, it was nuts. And actually, this guy that uh, a friend of mine. I don't see him very often anymore, but his name's Murray Pulver, and he uh, he actually. His dad uh, kind of had all the gear in his basement and just kind of got us going. He, nice. he, he did it himself for a number of years and couldn't do it because of a bad back anymore. And he just kind of passed it on to us and taught us how to do a bunch of shit. And, uh, yeah, and there's a lot of memorable moments with it. Like uh, when, you, when you live in a small town like Portage La Prairie and... Uh, <laughs> It's one o'clock at the Legion, and you're playing the last waltz of the night, and you see different people from town completely twisted <laughs> and grabbing each other's asses on the dance floor and dancing really tight. Fuck, man, it was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Great. Fantastic. So you mentioned that you're from Portage of Prairie, which is Manitoba, mm -hmm. and you're on this tour with Comeback Kid, who are also from Manitoba. Have you guys traded some crazy Manitoban stories? And if so, who has the craziest one? Oh, craziest stories. I don't know. I don't know. We haven't uh, traded a whole lot of tales as of yet. But, uh, I mean, we have so many ourselves. What the hell? <laughs> Manitoba's a crazy place. I love it and I hate it at the same time. It's fucking... Uh, yeah, I hear that a there, lot. There's a lot of... Uh, Really great people there and a lot of cool things going on, but a lot of uh, very, very, very difficult, fundamental, fucked up relations between, uh, you know, like First Nations people and, you know, the ever-expanding kind of neoliberal, NDP, liberal, conservative onslaught. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it... Uh, Anyway, I think things are about to get interesting with a lot of that stuff. So, so you touched upon politics, and there's no denying that propaganda has a very strong political stand and, uh, and social, economic, everything. You guys don't shy away from anything. Is there something, though, that you think propaganda was considered taboo or would not go near? Hmm. Wow, what a question. Uh, taboo? I don't really... I don't know. Like, I think one of the the sort of main elements of our band or the way we sort of approach things is that, you know, myths and untruths and especially official myths and, and the mythology of the, uh, the victors, I think all, all those things are, you know, they're made to be torn down and, you know, mocked or, you know, in some way chipped away. And I think our band, we just try to make a small contribution to that process to delegitimize the official myths of, of uh, the day. And uh, yeah, so I don't really know if there's anything taboo that we would, uh, you know, you know, every, we, we're pretty, you know, 
open to most stuff anyway, so what the hell. How happy are you that the Jets are back? Um, you know what? I went through a phase of uh, sort of, I was thinking of getting season tickets with right. s with 15 other guys. And, you know, the thought we'd, that we'd uh, maybe go to four games each a year and just have a hand in like having a seat and getting into it again, you know, right. a little bit. Because when they left, you know, I was, you know, uh, a few of us kind of grew up on hockey in the band. Played it for years, you know. I, you know, I refereed for a while, all that stuff. If I can, uh, I like it. What the hell? But uh, I didn't get tickets. They sold out super quick. Right, yeah. The sort of online ticket fucking weirdness. Uh, people were buying them from all over North America, and people in Winnipeg were sort of, you know, left out in the cold on it for for anything that was left over. Uh, there's a deal with the Manitoba Moose right. season ticket holders, and they got the most of them. So they were all gone in something like 15 minutes or something like that. And uh, you know what? And then seeing the whole thing come back, um, the economy of, the, of professional sports, all that stuff, it's, uh, it's just nauseating. I, can, I, I, I get into the game sometimes, like usually close to playoffs. I've gotten to the point where I don't really watch anything till maybe March. To manage the distinction between this mandatory break and real plans of submission. Have a in Nuremberg. Specifically the function of the ritual serves in conjunction. Beef and Chris and I play like beer league in in the winter. Like you know, you try to play. try to do as many games oh, wow. as we can over around. And I I like that more than watching games on on the TV. And uh, you know what? When when the Jets came back and they unleashed the logo, and went that conscious you know that conscious decision was made to kind of tail along with this you know perceived trendy military thing or. Just right. pushing that angle, I thought, was fucking bullshit. And uh, I don't really fucking... Uh, I'll go to games if they're for free. I'm not fucking... <laughs> it's, and it's, you know, it's difficult for me to care about at this point because uh, I, th I went to a couple games last year and what they had was, was just like this fucking cheddar cheese fucking propaganda that was blasted with, you know, fucking... Surround sound and the big video and the captain of the Jets in a fucking fighter jet and all this it, and the, and the, it looked a lot like the fucking uh, the uh, you know armed forces ads on TV. It was very similar, the uh, sort of production quality to it. And I just I I watched that. I was fucking made me sick. So I the fucking jets are fucking bullshit <laughs> <laughs> so, so so are professional sports in general but my side little fucking the one game that i can enjoy actually which is yeah a very detestable fucking game i think on many levels is nfl football i just think the games mean something 16 game season Fucking NHL is just fucking too spread thin. It's so I, I guess you're happy now that the referee strike in the NFL has been uh, yeah. finally settled. Yeah, yeah. I don't know the terms of what the refs got, so I can't. Hopefully, they got something with that they were looking for. But uh, on, on the topic of NHL and the strikes, the, the labor strike goes on. And just from your earlier comments, would it be safe to say that you're the opinion that this is just a bunch of rich guys fighting over silliness, or do you think there's an importance in the player unions versus the owners? Uh, I find it difficult to draw anything, you know, of, I don't know, whatever. I think people should uh, be concentrating on the labor movement outside of 
pro sports and millionaire athletes and billionaire owners and, you know, concentrate on what's going on, uh, you know, in your neighborhoods with people that deserve to be making better than shit minimum wage, you know? Your latest album, which is Failed States, is released on Epitaph Records. And I'm just curious to know, what made you decide to go with the juggernaut that's Epitaph <laughs> and, and not release it on your own G7 welcoming committee? Uh, we just don't have the capacity to do it. Our lives are busy. Um, small labels are pretty much near extinct by this point. Uh, the last situation that we had, uh, unfortunately, kind of uh, didn't work out. And we don't have time to, you know, put it out on five or six different labels around the world. And we needed to go with somebody that uh, could deliver on it and take care of it and they, they've actually they've everybody we've come in contact with has been very extremely friendly and they've helped out so we recently had an election here in Quebec to uh, nominate our political uh, provincial leaders and the Parti Québécois won a minority government and they're essentially a sovereignist government I'd be curious to know uh, what do you think this could potentially mean for Canada and Quebec within Canada if you have an opinion being from Manitoba mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I don't know. The politics of the party that won, it's sort of on the right wing edge of things, isn't it? Yes. Would you say? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I never know what to... I kind of... My tendency is to uh, uh, defer to First Nations communities and what they want. And uh, I'd be interested to see what their perspective would be on any kind of sovereignty movement and how that would affect their interests. Um, you know... I think uh, this is something that Canada has to make amends with and deal with in a positive way somehow uh, in every province. And uh, yeah, I'm not down with any political movement right now. The NDP in Manitoba is fucked on many levels, good on some levels, you know. It's like there's nothing that I, I can back with my heart, so yeah. Struggle oh. against the tar sands. I can back oh, that. Yeah. I'm, I'm with yeah. you on that one, man. All right, so uh, this is Jordy from Propagandy. You're watching Raw Cut Media. Bye now. <laughs>